going to be the, the external loop, right? And in, in the inner loop, we're going to loop through uh, the width, right? Going from uh, 00, 0 to 640, 1, 640, 2, 640. So now we have uh, this loop that we're going through. Now we have um, a uh, method here that we've built. And what it's going to do is, is calculate the distance uh, with the player index. So we showed two formulas before. This is going to be the formula. Um, um, let's just jump to it. Formula for calculating with depth, uh, depth, uh, distance with player index. So remember, we have to pass in two frames at a time. So for point zero zero, we pass in the first byte and the second byte. We do this bit shifting operator, operation. Um, make sure to do this to, get, to account for the player index being in um, play, depth with player index, and we return the distance. So at this point, um, let's just scroll back. For point zero zero, we now know the distance, and this is where we're choosing the colorization. So this is where you all can do this, and this is just a very basic colorization. Um, we mentioned the range is eight fifty to four thousand. So it's anything le less than or equal to 900, we're really close to the connect. So if that's the case, I'm going to choose the color blue and max out the color blue and not use any green or red. Now, if we're between 900 and 2,000, which is about half, we're going to make everything green. And if we're over 2,000, meaning we're a little farther away, you can do the, the, the um, uh, bing it to convert 2,000 millimeters into inches or whatever your favorite uh, form of measurement is, meters, uh, uh, hectares, etc. Um, if it's greater than 2,000, uh, this is uh, we're going to color everything red. So I have some code um, commented out here. And at 0, 0, we got the distance. We're choosing the color. And we are adding to our color frame the blue, green, red index based on the distance from that value. And just remember, uh, at the end of this loop, we do need to, because each color represents two, we're always going two at a time. Each color represent, uh, each distance represents two, uh, two bytes. OK, let's, uh, we've talked a lot about the code. Let's just see it in action. So here's our awesome histogram. And what you see here is three colors. Uh, let's see if we can go green. And as my hand goes closer, it becomes blue. And you can see, I think the cr threshold was 900. So this is the 900th threshold. And if I move my hand way far back, you can see it on here. It actually passes the 2,000 threshold to make everything red. So what we've done is just decided, based on, on the data that we had, uh, based on the distance for each pixel, what, what are those three colors to choose? Fun stuff. Now, one thing uh, we talked about earlier was the player index. So we actually, I'm going to uncomment this. We can actually choose, uh, when we're looping through the pixels, we can find out if that pixel represents a specific player. So I have a helper method here. I'm going to go to get player index. And the formula for this is. Um, now, it's only the player index, remember, is only in that first one because we, we bit shifted by three. Um, now we're going to do a bitwise and on the first frame. And that's going to return the player index. Valid values are zero. It's not a person, or it's not a player that's being tracked. One is the first, one represents skeleton zero. Uh, and then two represents skeleton one. Um, and if that isn't confusing, um, you can check this slide and, and make sure you're doing the right thing. So let me just show you. Oh, actually, let's, let's talk about the colors we're doing. So if we have a player, now we could choose a different color for player one versus player two. Um, or find out, we could choose whatever way. These are really basic ways that we're coloring, right? We're basically, in this case, choosing full green and full red um, to color any player. Greater than zero uh, means that it's either going to be player one or player two. Uh, and we can track up to two skeletons per connect. And what I'm going to do is just stand up here. 
and with any luck our skeleton tracking will turn on and as you can see here the combination those two color combinations make me sort of this uh, yellow gold person and I'm now tracked and what you see is it doesn't matter what distance is because that uh, that colorization is at the very end of my code and I'm saying hey if, if this this point represents a skeleton then I want you to color it um, uh, full green and full red which gives me that that wonderful yellow glow okay so we've seen how we can get player index information combined with depth data uh, the last thing I want to show you is just the formula that we actually use in the coding for fun connect library and that's actually in the skeletal viewer uh, sample as well and this is calculating intensity based on depth so we've hard coded said if you're either this you're either close middle or far or you're a player those are the four scenarios that we've done so far instead what we can do is actually scale the value meaning uh, choose different uh, choose what value for 255 to do and apply it equally across these what this is going to do is choose a shade of gray um, so let me just jump to this value so we have an int intensity and we set it across all three and uh, that's the same thing that we're going to show let me just jump into the formula um, and we do the 4,850 and then the max distance offset, which is just the subtraction of those two. Let's just full screen this. So 4,000 minus 850. And then um, I won't bother going through this formula, but basically what this is going to return is a value between um, 0 and 255. And it basically scales whether you're very light gray to white or very dark gray to black. It's going to scale that value 0 to 255. And when you set that across all of your colors, uh, the way we do here, then, um, then you're going to get those shades of gray. And let's just show that in action. And this is just going to overwrite data above since we're putting it at the bottom. And now we have the shades of gray. The darker, the farther away you get, it's now choosing the different shades of gray. So, um, And I think skeletal tracking should still work. if order of operations is correct so now I have um, gold man inside a monochrome world um, which is a, a, a new upcoming title I'm building okay so we've uh, walked through a lot of things within the depth data we'll put the samples available but the point is when you're working with depth data you're not getting an actual image you're getting a distance per pixel what you do with that distance per pixel and how you color it is up to you. The nice thing is, too, is you can choose different colors based on player data as well. Uh, thanks, and in our next video, we're going to walk through, now that we've shown skeletal tracking for depth data, we're actually going to show how you can track different joints within uh, positions in the skeleton engine. Thanks.